What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This episode is an extension of episode 8, the Astral Rift. I first and foremost want to apologize. I gave misinformation at the beginning of the episode and I most likely will be taking down the episode given the fact that now I have more knowledge. So what's going to wind up if it episode winds up sitting there, it's just a reminder that I'm human. I make mistakes. So what winds up happening is or rewind what I said was once you reach your defeat limit, you'll have to wait for a timer to have your defeats go away. That was an assumption that I was incorrect about. What happens is once you reach your fifth loss, you'll get a box that says concede defeat or watch a video to remove a loss. <coughs> I haven't gotten past that, so I don't know if there's another ad. It's possible, but I highly doubt it. I don't know. I can't speak on that. But I do know the one time I actually got it, or two times I got it, I did watch the ad the second time. I didn't watch it the first time. First time I didn't watch it because I only got up to four wins. I don't like riding the wire, um, knowing that my next loss will end my run. I just wanted to start back all over again. But the second time I did, I was at eight wins. I needed one more. I lost five times, so I watched the ad and just happened to win and get my compasses after that. So it does benefit. Now, as you progress and you win, your spheres over here will increase, and that goes into your expedition savings. Once you reach the ninth win or you lose five times, you will be able to withdraw that savings, and that goes in the spheres go into your battle pass, and obviously the compasses into poles. So each time you win or each time you lose five times, you're still going to get those fears to increase your battle pass and go forward. I thought it was something I thought the expedition savings was like the rune hunt where if you're number one and you finish all of it, you still have to keep playing your rune hunt cards throughout the week. So that way you can maintain a certain portion of the leaderboard and get that chest. I thought the astral summoning or astral rift was the exact same thing. It was not. I was incorrect on my thoughts. I'm human. What can we say? So, Battle Pass. I stated before, this is an amazing offer, and I stick by that. It is phenomenal. The rewards you get out of here are fantastic, so grinding out the Astral Rift is a big plus. Also, in the summonings. In the summonings, every 40th compass spent is guaranteed to get you a legendary hero. That is completely accurate. It winds up saying guaranteed legendary hero on there. So if you happen to pull one or two legendaries in that, you'll at least know which one was your guaranteed. Every 70th compass spent is guaranteed to get you a legendary astral hero. Same concept. It's going to be lit on fire because it's an astral. And it does say guaranteed astral hero on there. It's pretty great. Now, along with the otherworldly loot, that I talked about in the previous video. You can get three copies of Pirate Queen. You can get seven legendaries, 100 ethereal summons, 20 golden runes, 2,500 regular runes, 50,000 coin, and 30,000 teeth. That is only a small, or uh, that's a special portion if you're lucky enough to get the otherworldly loot. The rest of the time, you're going to be looking at possibly getting one copy of Pirate Queen, one legendary copy, 50 gems, one ethereal summon, one golden rune, 50 regular runes, 50 coin or 500 coin, 500 teeth, or five epic or five copies of an epic. I've gotten teeth like crazy and it helped me out a lot to buy more runes out of the tournament shop, which helped me increase a lot of my perks. Both of which were the newest ones. I got the Paladin armor up to 19. And I also got a uh, shark. There we go. Shark tornado up to level 20. So we can have that continuous trigger of the tornado every 10 seconds. It's, I want to say that the tornado lasts 10 seconds. So you have a five second interval before the next tornado hits. This does work out very well. And as you can see, I do have it on fire starter because I theorized previously that the shark tornado once it triggers the second time, if Firestarter is in his bunker, the damage increase that he gets inside the bunker is reflected in the Shark Tornado. And I did witness that. It does work out that way. So there is finally a diamond perk 
that worked on Firestarter, whether he is in or out of the bunker. Now, if they wind up changing it to where all the diamond perks work while he's in and out of the bunker, I will let you know at that time if someone hasn't already told me before or it hasn't already been noticed before. Just going that up there. I also took Deadly Swamp to level 60 for the second trigger. This is actually helping me out quite a bit. After 15 seconds of each round, create another swamp at the same location for 10 seconds. And this is the same thing that applied, in my opinion, with the tornado, is there's a small window where there is no swamp, and then all of a sudden there's another swamp. This has helped me a lot against tech golems that have armor plating on all slots, or two of the slots, or a red tech golem armor plating, which is the bane of my existence right now, if you could not tell from my facial expression. I hate that. I hate that card so much right now. But this has helped me win quite a few times because of that second trigger. Deadly Swamp and Witch, two very great ads. The Shark Tornado and Pirate Queen, very good ads. You'll be seeing a video of me playing the Pirate Queen here shortly once I can get her to level 10. She has to be level 10 for me to justify her. I have been trying all day to make her work in multiple decks, but she is just too weak at level 8 for where I'm at on the ladder and where my might percentage is at. When she's level 10, I'll do that video. So, like I normally do, I'm going to do a round to see if we can win. As you can tell, I've already lost once. It did not go swimmingly, and I am still questioning whether or not my strongest deck is actually my strongest deck. So, let's get into it, see if we win or lose. Boy, that was a long wait timer. Barbudorsh. This is what I was talking about. This has happened almost every single fight. This is a bot. I know it's a bot. It's a bot. And I have to fight a tech golem bot with a hundred level tech armor plating. Okay. After a little while, you start to get disconcerted. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If you couldn't tell from my facial expression and my lack of enthusiasm is because this has become very, very common, and I have yet to wrap my head around the fact that this is what I'm going to be fighting on a regular basis. Once I get my head wrapped around it, it won't be as disconcerting. It'll just be, oh, look, there's another one. Oh, look, there's another one. Now it's, it's, oh, there's another one. So as of right now, this deck has done very well against these tech golems. But as you can see, he took nothing. He did not. He literally stood there and went, hit me, bro. <sighs> One thing I have to work on, unfortunately, because if you're going to be god mode, you got to have all the god mode cards. And I like going god mode. Oh, cheese and crackers. Oh, look, it's already supered. Look at him. He's just going to eat me alive. So I was, I was notified earlier that it was confirmed that they made the Astral Rifts harder. And I can 100% agree with that because of the fact that I am running into bots with Tech Golem and his max perks way more than I really should. And what I've ever, or what I've ever experienced on the ladder. Like I've experienced it on the ladder a few times, but I experienced, I've experienced it a lot more and the riffs today that's the best way i can put it i'm not enthused about it i do like a challenge from time to time but when it's the same challenge over and over and over and over and over again you get disconcerted oh geez really okay well that's that's what i get hocus pocus is on something and i wasn't even paying attention great okay well that's that such is life you know, you make you I should have I really need to as a player really, really, really take the time at the beginning of each individual fight and look at the opponent's perks, what is going to come at me, what I have to avoid, where I need to be placing my cards, stuff like that. Don't you do your crying face at me. I'm the one who's already crying, my friend. OK, you have disconcerted me to the highest possible level. Tornado kicks in. Get in there, kits. There we go. Okay, come on. Let's let's beat this golem into submission. Everything going at him. It took all of that to drop him. Insane. Insane. 
But as you can see, the oh, I almost made a play mistake there. As you can see, the uh, swamp triggering a second time is actually super beneficial. It did help eat away at him through his shield and everything that he had to offer me. We are setting up that bulky front line. It is becoming clear to me that I, uh, I am really needing to work on some tanks here and start going with the tank meta just based off the perks and how many have resisted me so much. We're doing relatively well now. Um, I'm, I'm still a little disheartened. I can't lie to you. When you face something like this, you constantly have doubts, and I am getting doubts upon doubts upon doubts all the time, is what's going to wind up happening when he has all his cards supered out? What's going to wind up happening? Where, where am I going to start watching my stuff just get erased? And it looks like it's going to happen right about now. Nope. Return. Nice. That's fantastic. As you can tell, I'm disconcerted, so I'm very pessimistic right now. But that shield is making me be less pessimistic let's point it out that way and the second kitsune is making me feel a little bit more confident because as one gets shot back the other one goes forward and does her job there is a second tech golem on the field now i'm disconcerted again and i'm riding the wire with one heart so i need to start switching around my perks it looks like let me double check something because we did win this one. So we got we we bought ourselves the final fight here. Did I put the Kitsune perk on Kitsune? I did. Okay, so that does help. I did make that adjustment. So normally I don't I don't normally put the Kitsune perk on Kitsune. 99% of the time it's on a card that actually needs it the most. But I have been running into a lot of uh hocus pocuses and stuff like that. So it's just my counter for the hocus pocus. Get in there, get in there. Look at those tornadoes go. Those tornadoes are helping shred. The swamp is helping shred. The multiple triggers is helping it shred. And that's what got us the W. Heck yes. I was disconcerted that whole time. 174.2 million damage shot out of there. It Barba, Barba Dorsch is actually a real person. Wow. Okay, did not expect that. Okay, cool. So that made me think it was a bot, was the avatar and the picture. Past experiences have told me that's a bot, but the fact that this is a real person, very, very cool. So that is going to be the end of this video. I'm, again, I cannot apologize enough for the misinformation I gave this morning. I will try my damnedest not to let that happen again. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the fight. I'm so tired right now. <laughs> Uh, the ups and downs of the emotions today in regards to all these fights has me up and down. And to be rightfully honest with you guys, it has eaten me alive, the fact that I went and gave misinformation. I hate, I hate when I do that. So to everybody who took it and took that information as this is exactly what's going to happen, I, so, I completely apologize, and I hope that this video makes up for it. So I'm going to leave you the same way I always do. Life can be fun if you allow it to be. See you next time.